We're now at the MCU5. There's a back plate chucked in there, and there's a program written part of the way through. We're down to line seven MUU, which is a hold program. This is held in this position to check the correct dimension before continuing with the program. Any adjustments can be made at this point manually by exiting the program and manually moving the X or Z axes to give the correction required. If after checking the diameter all is in order, it's just a case of pressing the start button again and the program will commence. Start button here, one press and away it goes. What it's doing now is taking 0.5mm guts off and leaving 2mm on the end as a flange. I'm only using 0.5mm as this suits the chip breaker. If I go any more the chip breaker doesn't appear to work with this material and we end up with lots of stringy bits coming off which don't clear. I'd best put the guard over say it's dirtying the floor up too much. We'll let this run through. You can see that the, the program that it's on now is it's going to reduce the diameter by 6 millimetres for a distance of 24 millimetres at the feed rate of 150 and the depth of cut is 50 which is 0 0.50 0 0.5 of a millimetre. Once it's run through this cycle it will go to line 10 MO5 which will stop the motor 11 is M00 again which, halts the, which stops the, halts the program uh, and then further checks can be made on the diameter before the final finishing diameter is put on in line 13. Line 13 only puts the diameter on for 4 millimetres in distance just enough to measure with. Uh, after doing the 605 cut on line 13 uh, measurement is taken again if the 605 needs any adjustment this can be made on line 17 so that we end up with the exact dimension that we need. It's important that the back plates are a good fit within the crankcase. Right, we're back recording now. You can see by the program that I've made the first cut, the 603. Uh, I've checked the dimension and that's okay. Uh, we're halting in line 15 at the moment and waiting as soon as I push the start button again we'll continue with MO3 which starts the spindle motor and then line 17 is G84 which is a turning cycle. It's going to turn 603 off for 24 millimeters at a speed of 60 and it's going to do it all in one, one cut. Don't forget though that we've already had the earlier cycles so we'll only be cutting any small amount probably the 03 of a millimetre. So this, this is the final finish cut on the back plate it's reducing the spigot diameter to 28 0.97. You see that it's uh, moving slowly, it's just picked up its own swarf. It will reach to the end and it will face out along the flange. Now coming out across the flange, coming back to the end of the cycle and then it stops. Next operation is uh, to face off the end you'll see that the tool is going to move X in uh, 5 millimeters Z is going to move towards the chuck 1 millimeter and then it's going to start the cycle on line 22 cycle G88 which is a facing operation it faces the end of the uh, back plate off to the predetermined length in this instance it's taken off 284 2.84 millimeters in the Z column. Press the button once, 
spindle starts and there's a movement starting there. The first one is cutting here. The tool is not quite. Uh, there's the first cut. This is cut in an increments of 0.4 of a millimetre. I don't want any chance of pushing the job out of the chuck. It's only being held on the inside of the, if you remember, on the inside bore. So it's not 110% secure, but it's secure enough to take light cuts as we're doing here at a reasonable speed. Two point eight four by cutting at point four per cut. There's obviously taking eight passes, and the last pass will be point oh four, which you'll note is probably this one, I should think. Yeah, that's the point oh four mil being cut off now, which leaves a nice finish on the end of the plate. Comes away comes out, spindle stops, it's now ready for tool change. I'm not using the auto turret for this, I find it just as quick and easy to use the tools that are set up here. That's the next tool to go in, which is a parting tool, grooving tool, set up to, if I can find it, you can see it set up, it's uh, a one millimetre wide grooving tool. That's the next one to go in. You can see here that the grooving tool has been fitted. And we're all ready to start the grooving cycle. I've reduced the speed back to 500 RPM so we'll hit the start button and away we go. back with it now. Whilst you've been away, in secret, I've bored a hole in the end, 6mm. There's the ball ended 6mm cutter into the end for the depth of required for the bowl and I've fitted the boring tool. So the next move is to take it into the centre of the bore. It moves in a couple of mil and it's, it starts boring it after I press the program again. So we press the start button, it moves the tool into position, it stops so that I can check that it's in the correct position, I can see that it's flush with the end, absolutely flush with the end, and it's central to the ball. Yep. So we can now press again, it will move into the bore a couple of mil, Spindle started and it's moved into the bore a couple of mil. It's now ready to do the program. So here we go. This is a series of cuts. It cuts here for some of it, but it's not too important. We're not on piecework here. See the swarf comes out quite cleanly. Put the cover over. Yeah, you can just see it through there. You can see the bowl is being formed by the radius cuts. That's a sub program that's uh, doing the cutting. You see the Z is putting 0.3 of a mil cut on each time. O2 is a radius cut. 
in this case it's a 7 mil radius so you've got 7 mil on X and 7 mil on Z the, the tool X moves back in 7 mil and then it moves the Z axis moves forward 7 mil and then M17 takes it back to the previous line so it just keeps going through this cycle which are G25s it will keep doing this until it reaches the last cut then it will stop and I'll start the video again at that point Right, so now we can see we've reached the M00 which is the halt in the program again there's no waiting for me to give it a squirt of uh, cutting fluid just to uh, help with the final cut press the start button and the cycle should finish off there's no putting the final cut in you can see a fine piece of swarf coming out what it's going to do then is uh, go back into the bore and put a radius on the end come out and now it's going to put a just going to reduce the front end of the spigot slightly That's just reducing up the spigot on the outside of the band that could be contacting the conrod or crank pin. And that's that part finished. All that needs to be done now is remove the tool, move the carriage out and replace the cutting tool for the next item. That's done. That's that part of the process finished. That's now going to come over with these other the others here waiting to go into the milling machine.